Good evening. And I suppose some of you will find fault with that. <laughs> An interesting news item. A Scotsman who died last week gave up the secret of the ankle-length kilt he wore all his life. Living underneath were found a family of 28 Pakistanis <laughs> who had lived under the kilt rent-free without the Scotsman's knowledge. <laughs> when evicted from the kilt, the Pakistani said, thank God we couldn't go on living with that hanging over our head any longer. <laughs> Please, sit down. And now, for do-it-yourself lovers, this is the Nightstone or rammer for compressing unpolished rife. It's self-explanatory. <laughs> now, here is another useful household hint. It's a ten-ton uncle frightener in six-foot lengths. <laughs> and here, a very important item, a cross-section of the combustion chamber in George Brown's trousers. <laughs> The visit of an English warship to an American port has been cancelled. Two sailors were found to be so sunburnt they might have been mistaken for Negroes. The captain had a yellow face due to banana poisoning <laughs> and could have passed for a Chinaman. Well now, here is a physician who has practiced in Harley Street until he's been moved on by the police. Dr. Ruba. Well? Good evening, doctor. Name? Lottie Trimfaster, miss. My fiancé, while dining at our residence recently, seized a carrot, sharpened it with his knife, and tried to pierce his meat with it. We didn't know what to say. One of you should have said, this is the thin end of the veg. <laughs> <laughs> Witty rebuke works wonders. Next. Mr. H. London, my unruly nephew shot his mother and father so he could go to an orphan's picnic. Can anything be done about this? Abolish orphans' picnics. Next. I have very large ears. Self-evidently, but continue. Oh. Well, every evening when my husband comes in from the office, he throws his hat on my right ear and then shouts, Sorry, old girl, I thought it was a hat peg. My mother hates this. What can I do? Pretend it is the hat peg. <laughs> Take his umbrella from him and hang it on your other ear. <laughs> then just stand there. Don't uh, attempt to get him any food until he removes the things. That'll make him look silly in front of your mother. Or alternatively, he'll starve to death. <laughs> Either way, you win. And with ears like yours, you deserve some pleasure in life. <laughs> Next. Uh, my niece read that she should stand on her head to keep young and lovely. She started by doing it against the wall to keep her balance. But unfortunately, a male guest struck a match on the sole of her foot causing her to lose her balance and fall over, since when she's given it up. Well, she's just as well. She sounds an insufferable idiot, whichever way you look at her. Next. My name is Mrs. Amy Elstick. So? My husband sometimes thinks he's a whiting, and my doctor says I must humour him. How can I do it? Oh, Buy him a plastic fishtail. Get him to lie down in a semicircle and stick the end of the tail into his mouth. <laughs> then make a sizzling noise and tell him you're frying him. If he still insists that he's a whiting, there's something wrong with his mental makeup. If he shouts, stop this foolery, Amy, gets up and goes out, then he's admitting that he's not a whiting and all will be well. And talking about stopping foolery, the surgery is now closed. Good night. <laughs> well, what? <laughs> And three pair of the chips. <laughs> An alcoholic reporter in Hong Kong has discovered a Chinese mouse which walks a tiny tightrope. This indicates that the little creature is determined to show its virtuosity. The tightrope Tim Wong, as he is called, carries a tiny Japanese sunshade, while below there is a pretty female assistant, mouse called Jenny Wong, who encourages him with cries of Hoi, Ho, Hapla, and Oh dear. <laughs> the Wongs were recently banned from entering South Africa and were told that two Wongs don't make a wife. <laughs> and now, here straining like a greyhound in his slips, our ballet critic Eric Badger. Last night, Covent Garden audiences were privileged to see the first performance of Chaka Survivor's new ballet, Bath Chair, specially constructed as a vehicle for aging dancer Serge Trouserin. 
<laughs> For those of us who remember Serge in his heyday, it was a poignant evening. Gone was the golden boy who, it is rumoured, had the patronage of every queen in Europe. <laughs> Gone the frantic youth whose cabrioles were flaunted on the front of every ballet magazine. Here was Serge, as the chair-bound Indian Army Colonel, being pushed along the pier by his pretty nurse, a clever performance by Molly Sausage. It was almost a relief when the third act found the empty chair bobbing up and down in the ocean. And one was reminded of the old ballet acid adage, old dancers never die, they just run out of jetés. <laughs> But now, to cheer us all up, here is Tumbleover defying gravity and the orchestra in a snatch from the seven pillars of wisdom. Come into the kitchen with Mrs. Welkstuffer. <laughs> Author of porridge and the reheat problem. With a boiled rice and jam. And cabbage, a cure. Good evening. Now, take a cauliflower, tear it to bits, sift it through a sieve into a copper pan, drop cheese on it and serve cold. Now, this I call chauffe la foie, Avec fromage, souricière, maîtresse d'hôtel. Good night and many thanks. <laughs> A machine which stamps good morning on the breakfast toast is, I hope, only the beginning of the drive for breakfast bliss. Likewise, the warm word welcome on every rasher of bacon. Plus a boiled egg that sings the Lord's Prayer when the top is cut off. <laughs> Now, here is the man who invented the concrete violin for musical navvies. <laughs> Dr. Strabismus, whom God preserve, of Utrecht. Ah, good evening. Tonight, in our series of uh, testing the proverbs, we offer you two for the price of one. A rolling stone gathers no moss. <laughs> Well, first to commence with is, here is number one. Here is A, in a bowl of water. As you will observe, there is not one ripple on the whole water. Not a ripple. Now, here is B, in a plumb line. Now, I lower the plumb line B into part A. So, observe, still no movement of any kind. Thus, we must have inevitably reached the conclusion that still waters do not run deep. No deep water. <laughs> Now then, I want you four to get the whole, the whole of the, 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 the rock in. Okay, sir. Right, Can you get the top like this? I got it, I got it, thank you. And good, so good. Yeah. Hold on now, Heinrich, make with the clapperboard. Oh, no. Ready? No. No, no. A rolling stone gathers no moss. Take one. Action! <laughs> Oh, you 
you are not a naughty boulder. You are not a boulder. Now then. This can be you. Yeah. Minute portions of moss, evening dress, and car dropping. <laughs> for the job we had on hand. Therefore, we'll do the whole experiment again using a powerful adhesive glue. Heinrich, Smolik, Tapa. <laughs> 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 karma sutra lessons are killing me. Now then, what we are doing now is applying a powerful adhesive glue to the outside of the boulder. Put it all on, mix a quicker, faster, faster, put! Oh. Put the microphone on the ground! Yeah. That's why we got you so near to the ground, not some other video. <laughs> Ready! A rolling stone, get us no boss! Yeah, yeah, we know it. Take it! Two! Ready, action! Oh, no! <laughs> Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> good, a good. A mechanism end to our experiment. It proves conclusively that a rolling stone does gather moss, provided it's covered with a powerful adhesive glue. So, good night to you all. <laughs> In America, men who do the housework can now buy hairy tweed-smelling aprons to give them a masculine air at a feminine job. <laughs> there is also a special Tarzan kitchen set. It consists of a chess wig, a spotted loincloth, and a rope that is attached to the ceiling, which allows the man to swing freely between gas stove and fridge as he makes wristholes with his feet. <laughs> and now architecture. Here, here is a revolutionary breakthrough in the field of meaningful construction. A plastic Regency type skyscraper office bungalow. It's lovely. <laughs> Beautiful. And so to our personal call. Gentleman, sick of cruelty to human beings, wishes to meet another gentleman with view to pretending to be a lost horse. <laughs> Costume supplied, front or rear legs, terms 50 50 on taking. Anglo-Indian, retired, gives elocution lessons to parrots. Budgerigars need not apply. <laughs> Experienced male cook, seeks position with cannibal family. Forty years work among missionaries. <laughs> Experienced conjurer, seeks post as butler valet. Would produce bent egg from soft hat or goldfish from clear soup. Wanted by wealthy gentlemen. Fishmonger to sell fish at a concert as a sort of joke. All fish supplied, bring own apron and state size of slab required. <laughs> come, come, come to me, Flora. Come once again and be. The scene is an elegant soiree, somewhere in Belgrave Square. Tenor sings, come to me Thora, but Thora, alas, is elsewhere. She's eloped with an absolute bounder, leaving this note. I regret I've fallen in love with the captain and his thorough grip garterette. There is no power on earth stronger than love, except thread golds, the garterette with heart. <laughs> A group of scientists... A group of scientists have announced a game that if you sit an elephant at a piano for 50,000 years, it would in that time eventually have played the entire works of Chopin, Irving Berlin, broken the piano stool and died. <laughs> 
Now, I loathe science as much as I loathe Mrs. Hilda Gronk of Three Ironside Villa Scunthorpe. I like simple rural things, like this simple country ruin. <laughs> when blow lies buried under the snow, that <laughs> time for you to know. <laughs> when craps is ripened by the sun, cutting down eyes and gathering in. <laughs> that may not make sense to you. But it makes sense, more sense, than this week's edition of Kinema. Mervyn Glue reports. And this is Mervyn Glue reporting. In tonight's Kinema, we proudly present an excerpt from the latest epic motion picture, brainchild of dynamic Hollywood producer Saul Hogwash, whose work has been compared unfavorably with that of Cecil B. DeMille. But first, here with me tonight to set the scene for you is Saul Hogwash. Thank you, Moivin. You're okay. The film, Pocket Hero, depicts the life and times of that great British sea dog, the tiny Horace Nelson. The scene you're about to see comes from the Battle of Trafalgar sequence. <laughs> Nelson stands on the poop. By his side, unbeknownst to him, his darling Emma, Lady Hamilton. Something in her voice and manner betrays her. Chipman easy. Hogwash's super mammoth production of Ibsen's Master Builder on Ice Meets Abbott and Costello. <laughs> He's described as the first film pantomime in the nude. There are musical numbers by Sibelius with words by Louis Armstrong, said Hogwash, because of the Scandinavian background. 
and a fairy ballet on skates with over 400 crippled elves forming the words, <laughs> Merry Christmas in Chalk Ice. <laughs> the introduction of an Arab versus Israeli hockey match on the moon may be called an intrusion, but the panto has to be up to date. Now, here are some numbers that everybody will soon be whistling. Up a lazy river in a Model T fjord. That, that's no way to treat a lady. And I can see the Viking on the wall. But no discussions on high art would be complete without an example of the poetry of Roland of Milk. Poem called Dan Ted. Like a melon on a stalk, face above throat, I saw you walk. You wandered by the stagnant mirror that had the odor of rancid beer. <laughs> Darkling you moved, then banged your head against the end of the potting shed. <laughs> there was no moon, all was pitch black. When rubbing your head, you wandered back. <laughs> Which reminds me of an epitaph, the epitaph on the grave of a dentist. Stranger passed by this grave with gravity. This dentist is filling his last cavity. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you culture-minded? If you are, answer the following questions, but don't send the answers to me. Lebensraum is A, a German sausage, B, the capital of Silesia, or C, a Jewish cricketer. <laughs> Question two. Egmont and Horn were a firm of haberdashers, B, an opera by Beethoven, or C, a Jewish cricketer. <laughs> Finally, question three. The 19th of January, 1734, fell A, on a Wednesday, B, on a Saturday, C, on a Monday, or it didn't fall at all. It was pushed. <laughs> by a Jewish cricketer. Oh. Hello again. Good news for housewives. Snibble still leads the way. No other demulgent claims to remove rust from roller skates, glamorize the nostrils, preserve plastic cisterns and music stands, impart a new flavor to tinned gherkins, make wheelbarrows waterproof, cure nervous horses, polish tomatoes, and stop cliff erosion. And that's not all. <laughs> Because I know nothing about Bulgaria. Nor did I, till I read the new Snibbo information booklet, free with every packet of Snibbeline Hair Restorer. Ooh. I remember that. <laughs> Doris, you look radiant. Snibbo information booklet, free with every packet of Snibbeline. I am now able to talk about Bulgaria wherever I go. <laughs> Thanks to Snibbo. <laughs> Good old Bulgaria. <laughs> Use Snibbo. My last lecture on the little known land of the uh, Aha tribe <laughs> raised uh, such a storm of apathy that I've been privileged to be called upon to give you some further notes on this little known and quite uninteresting African tribe. <laughs> For with a Aha uh, land. <laughs> the Aha's uh, are a simple folk, in fact, they're Stupid. <laughs> they have a limited vocabulary consisting mainly of grunts and yells. <laughs> Many accidents occur during this. <laughs> Which isn't helped by the fact that they wear rings up their noses. The headsman's chief wife is the uh, most important woman in the village. She's the only one. <laughs> she does no work and sits all day on a pile of baked mud. <laughs> if, uh, if she... Oh! 
If she uh, wishes to take exercise, she's carried round the corral on some poor wog's nut. <laughs> if she rebukes one of her children, it's killed. If the child gets in first, she's killed. <laughs> The Bushangis are the chief enemies of the uh, <laughs> uh, The battles, uh, the uh, the Bushangi, uh, their, their battles only end when they're yells and grunts. <laughs> I've driven away all the edible animals within 50 miles. <laughs> when the uh, Fight. <laughs> when they are, uh, 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 <laughs> they fight. They wear their peaks back to front, so the enemy will think they are retreating. <laughs> I was just telling them, sir, that you were back to front. <laughs> <laughs> they stamp their feet on their shields to make a terrifying noise. <laughs> Stamping on them, their bodies are unprotected and many are spear. <laughs> when they are uh, 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 camp for the night, they light enormous fires behind them, which is very dangerous, which they immediately uh, put out to convince the enemy that they decided to stay but went away. What fools these people are! <laughs> <laughs> they are Ah, which doctor treats his patients by giving them concoctions of herbs. <laughs> if the medicine kills the patient, the uh, disease is pronounced incurable. If he recovers, it's said to be due to the medicine, and his youngest wife is killed out of gratitude for his recovery. <laughs> if the witch doctor fancies the wife, he usually lets the patient die. If the wife likes her husband, she poisons the witch doctor. All of which explains why the ah, ah, ahs are dying out. And I, for one, am not sorry, as they are, without doubt, thoroughly devoted. Now then. Uh, oh, I'm happy with Who are you? Oh, I'm your friend P. Window, please. I've got water on the brain. <laughs> Let's hope he's better soon. <laughs> and finally, two news items. Excavations at Pompeii continue. Last week, an ancient prison came to light with the bodies of two hardened criminals. <laughs> now, another one. The Scotsman claims that the Loch Ness Monster is a reality. He's been married to her for 37 years. 